A lot of uh, news out today. Um, I don't necessarily think the news itself was driving the market high. I think we had quite a good start uh, in Asia yesterday, uh, sorry, this morning. Um, and then obviously the commodities uh, were a lot stronger overnight and that sort of drove our, our markets a lot higher. Also some good news out of China in terms of retail sales, industrial production uh, in China, which I really think uh, lifted the market. Uh, the results really a mixed bag. Uh, I think quite good results from SPA, uh, one of the defensives. Uh, less good results from uh, the likes of PPC and then sort of a small quarterly update from Metropolitan which still showed that the consumer uh, was still under quite a lot of pressure uh, on, on the saving side. Well, Johnny, you mentioned PPC and that stock uh, up almost 3.5% uh, for today's trade. Headline earnings per share down 9% and also the company uh, saying that they were part of collusion in the cement industry but more so for the market share side of things. Uh, your view on what PPC has admitted to today and also just looking at the overall outlook for the cement industry. Um, yeah, if we just look at the overall outlook, obviously the infrastructure spend from government is going to be positive. Uh, we're not that positive on residential sort of building, which is a large portion, almost 50% of uh, sort of cement consumption. Uh, so that's probably where we're probably a bit more cautious in the market on the outlook for, for the cement industry. Uh, and it'll also be interesting to see how much prices PPC can actually pass on to their consumers. Uh, they're facing a bit of pressure from diesel costs and uh, obviously the must much talked about uh, ESCOM price hikes as well, which is going to affect their input costs. And it'll just be interesting to see how much PPC is able to pass on to their customers, particularly now that they've come out and actually uh, admitted to some sort of wrongdoing on sort of dividing up the market and collusion. They might find it a bit more difficult to make some of their price uh, price rises stick with their, with their customers. Well, Johnny, given the fact that PPC gained 3.5% today, does that mean investors are not going to be dumping the stock even though it has been involved in collusion? Um, look, by coming out and, and, and applying for leniency, they've probably got around having to pay a, a substantial fine. So they've got conditional leniency from the Competition Commission if they continue to comply with the Commission. So from that perspective, they may have avoided a very large fine. Stock was down in the morning. I see it rally towards the close. Uh, perhaps there's sort of some U.S. investors, uh, which is, stock is quite widely held offshore, uh, who are probably taking a slightly sort of longer-term view on, on the stock. Uh, but yeah, I think they'll probably get around not having to pay a, 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 a big fine and maybe some of the other companies that they'll testify against will, will be slapped with, uh, with fines. Mr. Price also came out with results today and sales up 11%. Achilles Hill though, uh, Miladies, uh, sales down 6%. But we know that this company is of course expanding its footprint into the rest of Africa and it's got a very defensive uh, mechanism in place as well. Uh, looking at the likes of Mr. Price, are you feeling hopeful that things will even get better for them even though that Christmas season is expected to be relatively muted considering the consumer is under pressure? Yeah, I mean, they were up 11% sort of on the sales side. I think it was up about 15% on sort of clothing and up only about 4% on the household side. Uh, most of the retailers we've spoken to seem to have had a pretty tough October. Uh, so things seem to be getting worse. I presume uh, Mr. Price has benefited from some down trading. Uh, so their sort of clothing sales, like for like, doing slightly better than their competitors. Uh, but like I said, I think they're still going to face a, a pretty tough Christmas. Most of these retailers uh, make almost two-thirds of their profits in, in, in the Christmas period. So that's going to be quite key for, for the likes of Mr. Price. Johnny, all the saga that's going on at Eskom, could you give us your view of what's going on? And are, is it a very big concern for foreign investors and also for local investors in terms of what will be happening to the companies that will be impacted by prospective tariff increases? Well, I guess it's, it's an economy-wide issue, as, as your previous uh, sort of guest uh, commented on. I mean, the, it seems to be quite a fluid situation at the moment in terms of resignations and counter-resignations. So we'll have to see exactly where, where the dust settles. But hopefully we'll get some, some kind of resolution on this uh, pretty shortly, because I think it does impact uh, particularly international and local investors' view of, of sort of South Africa as a whole. So hopefully we'll get some kind of resolution coming out of this pretty, pretty shortly. Uh, but I think generally... Uh, we need to relook at, at how we're going to sort of put these tariff increases through because to front load it I think is going to put tremendous pressure on, on the economy uh, and on the consumer who's already under quite a lot of pressure.